She faced bullying as a kid for her awkward looks and was rejected time and time again by modeling agencies. She then went on to become a model on the biggest billboard in Times Square. She had zero formal business education and yet she went on to create a handbag line that was not only featured in InStyle but on QVC and is now sold in department stores. She couldn't find healthy organic food to feed her kids and despite being told it couldn't be done, she started her own food line and said food line is now found at Walmart. She couldn't speak a word of English, yet she now uses her voice to publicly impact millions. She married a man who, let's face it, is larger than life and potentially more famous than the queen, yet she stands here today a strong, independent woman who knows who she is. Featured in Women's Health, Harper's Bazaar, and with regular appearances on the Today Show, The Talk, People, and Rachel Ray, just to name a few. So guys, please help me in welcoming the founder of Women of Today, a place where women can share and learn from each other rather than judge and compare. An online community that celebrates and embraces and authentically engages with women on a very real level. A place where community stories, business advice, recipes and healthy living tips are shared in order to give us the confidence, courage and strength to show up not just for everyone else, but for ourselves. The woman of today, tomorrow and for as long as we women need each other. So basically forever. The inspiradora Camilla Alves McConaughey. Oh my gosh, like I <laughs> All right, I literally have tears in my eyes. I'm not bullshitting you. That was the sweetest, most real way that anybody has started an interview with me in all the years that I've been doing this. Um, that's a good way to start this conversation. Hell, <laughs> hell yeah! God. I mean, look. You, the business that you're started, the community that you're building is so impactful. And I know the biggest thing for you is really using real people's stories. And so when I started looking into the community and then what you stood for, I was like, wow, you have so many stories that you can tell that I really do believe you are where you are today, not out of luck, but out of determination. All those times that you were told you couldn't, all those times that you faced a brick wall or an obstacle, um, you kept going. And to be honest, I think that is the biggest thing that stops women in getting whatever dream they like, whether it's, you know, starting a business, having a family, changing religions, like whatever that thing is. To me, it usually is the obstacle that gets in their way. Um, and then figuring out how to overcome that obstacle, I, I think is fundamental. Oh, you've, go it's, ahead. It, you know, very, it's very true what you're saying. I think that, you know, the no's that we hear in our lives do stop us from doing a lot of things. Um, I do think that it is really important. It's a challenge, right? It's a balance that I think that different stages of our lives as women, and, you know, I'm facing one right now, to be honest with you, but like, you know, the different stages of our lives and the different things that we want to do, it's important to really be able to understand, okay, is this no that I'm getting? Is this really like, you know, trying to stop me from where I'm supposed to be? Or is this no trying to protect me? right? From something worse happening. So it's been many things in my life where, you know, even coming to the United States, like I reached a point where I was like, you can't come back to America anymore. You have to stay in Brazil. And I remember sitting there and praying and say, you know what, God, if I have something bigger to do there, bring me back, find me a way back and, I'm, and I'll surrender. I'll go and do the work, you know, kind of thing that happened on businesses, you know, like, I talk to women a lot, a lot of times because you can get really cut up on, well, I love this idea. It's just the best idea in the world and it's got to be done. But what is your purpose? Is that really needed? Is that product, so, you know, is it really a customer for that product? How are you going to do going through all those stages? I think it really, um, it really makes a word of difference. I do want to correct something though on your introduction, because I do like to be very respectful of people in my journey. And when you say you know, about the baby food company, so really the baby food company, the way that it went about, yes, I did have that realization. I'm like, okay, I got to do something better. And on the journey of figure out how to do it, how to build the company, I got introduced by a friend. I literally called everybody I knew and did not know that 
could maybe guide me in the direction that can maybe teach me how to do this. What's the best route, how to go about it. And I knew nothing about the food industry and how to produce, how to do a mass production. And we launched 35 different products, 1500 stores all at once nationwide with a very, very, very small team. It was cuckoo. It was crazy. Um, but you know, I wanted to honor how the journey of Yummy Spoonful started, which it really was, you know, the founder, Agatha Achindu, founded the company. And when I was on my journey in one of my calls of, you know, again, I call a friend and then that person go, can't help you. But hey, let me connect you to this other person. So then I talked to that, that person. That person goes, hey, you know what? I was on a trade show and I saw this company that women is doing something very similar, not the same, but very similar of what you're talking, you're explaining to me. I, I still have her card saved somewhere. Would you want me to connect you guys? And that's how literally how it happened. And I co, you know, I wrote to her and we started talking and we met and we decided to go on this journey together. But really, she was the founder of the company. I came in and, and you know, kind of helped grow the company and the vision of the company of what it is and get into, um, you know, the targets and walmarts of the world that kind of thing so camilla that's beautiful and i love that you just laid that all out because to be honest you just proved my point girl you kept picking up the phone you kept calling you kept saying who do you know where can right you didn't get your husband to do it that would have been the easy route you were the one that was picking up the phone time and time again you even said i knew nothing about it so i was learning that's my point right it's not even about like whether you manufactured the product yourself right and i massive respect to your partner like i do not want to take anything away i think that she probably has her own incredible story to tell but my point being woman is that you saw this thing you saw that there was you know you're trying to feed your kids healthy food and you were looking and looking you didn't find anything so you didn't just stop right you didn't just go okay well there you go nothing exists you kept going you said this needs to be in the market who can i call and that woman like that mentality that way of thinking to me is exactly what um, builds confidence. It builds courage. It builds strength, right? That act in itself where you didn't just stop. So that's like almost the most impactful point of the story is that even when you faced people that thought you were crazy, that were saying it didn't exist, you found the right person to partner with. So that to me is extremely empowering. Yeah. So when we started this conversation, we talked about you know, the importance of learning, of uh, the importance of understanding when is really the time to push, when is the time to stop. And I think that that's extremely important for women to understand this because, because we are fighters, we are, you know, hustlers, we are, we get after, we can, you know, manage family and work and this and this and that and all of that. A lot of times it's easy for us to just continue in this roller coaster. So I had to step down. It was not a, you know, and it's really the first time we're talking about this. I've never really talked about this, but it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't fulfilling the purpose and it wasn't healthy for me to stay on that. So I had to go and it was so hard. I cannot tell you how hard that decision was. I, it took me so long and it really, I had to really, um, I had to let go of a lot of things, a lot of pride, a lot of things, a lot of work that I put into it, a lot of money that I put into it, a lot of a lot of things that it was like, I'm going to have to let all go. And I know people are going to be upset with me, but I have to do what's right for me and for my family. And I have to do what's right for my purpose. And right then the business had kind of scaled out of that. Right. Um, if you, if you are listening to this and you want to start your business, I think the first question that you got to ask yourself, it's what's the purpose of your business? Because when it gets hard, if you still truth to that purpose, you can still going. Right. So I remember like, you know, when I did the handbags with my mom, you know, my purpose wasn't really making handbags. My purpose was to give my mother like a a, a, a platform, a journey of something that, you know, I grew up. So when we moved here. I grew up, I grew up watching my mom going to work on high heels, super fashionable, working for like the biggest like fashion companies in Brazil. And, you know, she, we moved here to the United States and all of a sudden she's cleaning houses and she's making food in the garage to sell. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is, she, I can't like, and she, it wasn't even what Camilla wants to do. 
it's like, I don't even really like handbags. I like shoes. Okay. So <laughs> I was like, what do you want to do? Like what, what is going to really fulfill you right now? So we went on this journey together. Right. And at one point that journey became not so good. So we had to break ways, but again, those hard moments of understanding what's your purpose. So the whole time for the, for the handbag business, when it was hard, I was like, you have a purpose, fulfill that purpose, like get with that purpose. And then it kind of helped get through with the food company. What was that purpose with women of today? What's that purpose? So I think that having a purpose is so important beyond you can even imagine because the hard times are going to come. The doubts are going to come. The questions are going to come and you, and the sacrifice is going to come. So you need to have that purpose really clear to yourself. So it helps you through the journey. Girl, I freaking love that. That entire breakdown is so spot on because to me, the thing that I always say is success is never guaranteed, but the struggle is, right? The struggle to get to where you want to go. The struggle is real. And listen, I don't care what anybody says. I'm guilty of it, of going, I got this, you know, I know I can do and all of that. It's going to be a hundred times harder than you expect it to be. Even if your business succeed, even if you have like a business that all of a sudden it goes, boom, hey, it's a huge success, like overnight. The amount of hours and work that you're going to have to put in, it's way more than you ever think that you it will. So the struggle is real. The sacrifices are real, especially if you're a mother, especially if you, you, know, if you have a husband, the sacrifices are real. You know that. Um, so I think that, you know, for people, the women that are wanting to get into that journey, I think it's all like go for it, but just try to be as clear as you can going in. And if you have a husband and if you have a family, I think it's extremely important that your partner understands and knows why you're doing, why it's important to you to do it. Your family, your kids, like they are part of it. So they understand that, hey, when mama is not here, today, I know what she's doing. I know why she's not here. Like I remember with my kids, when I told them that I was going to step down from the food company, they start crying and they start crying because they're like, mama, like, who's going to do this now? Like, who is going to like, you know, because I've showed them all, you know, the science, the, the scientific studies and all that stuff. Like I used to have that open all the time. So they understood, right. Just with our foundation, they just keep living foundation. They understand, okay, when mom and papa, you know, we just did a, a, a really big virtual event for Texas for the relief, you know, of Texas had a huge storm. And Matthew and I were, you know, very comfortable, like in our house and trying to figure out and, and all of a sudden I'm like, baby, like we need to do something. So we strapped our boots and got into work. And within like, you know, literally something that takes people a year to make within three weeks, we put it together. We had this event, this virtual event. We were able to raise over $8 million for people we need in, you know, in a matter of hours and a matter of hour, I should say. And, you know, it, we were so busy putting that event together and the kids were like, you know, what's going on? Like, you know, we can't. And, and we show them, like, I was like, hey, come here. I show them, look what people are going through. Look what's happening. Da, da, da. So then the moment they understand, they go, go. Like, I got it. My, you know, my kids were like cooking lunch. They were, you know, making dinner. They're like, we got it. Go, go, mama. you know. So it, it's really important to include your kids and your family. So we'll make the journey easier and less resentful for them. And for yourself as well. That's so true. Oh my God. I love that. That's exactly how, um, so I actually don't have children. I'm Greek Orthodox. I had every plan of having four children, big Greek family. And then I found business and we started Quest Nutrition. I started to find myself again. I started to realize what I was capable of as a woman, as a human, what my dreams were. And I decided I didn't want children. So I went from marrying my husband, saying I was going to be a stay at home wife and wanted four children to then realizing there was a whole world out there that I didn't realize. I was like loving entrepreneurship. I was loving learning. I was loving facing my insecurities every single day and getting better and growing every single day. That when I sat Tom down and told him that I um, I didn't think I wanted children anymore, it was all tied to how I felt. So exactly what you just said, it's 
when I told him why, how I was feeling, how much joy I was getting from being my own person, by being my own woman, by finding out and discovering all these new things, I was so on fire for it. And by describing the emotion behind it, it really brought us together. And he was like, well, what kind of husband would I be if I see you so freaking happy and you're, you know, you're glowing from ear to ear when you talk about the love that you're doing in your life? And what kind of husband would I be if I was to say, well, I don't care about that. Go have four children you know so attaching the emotion big decision that's a big decision girl that's like huge but to me even that's why your story resonates with me so much because it's not even about the success or um like getting there it really to me was the struggle and the things I had to learn all along the way in order to get there. So with what you're doing with women of today, by sharing these stories, by sharing other women's stories, it's not just about you, it's about all the community. By other people sharing their real stories, it becomes this unity of understanding that it's not about the big glam goal at the end. It really is who do you want to be and what are you doing every single day to get there? So... How do you, now kind of going back to full circle with your husband, obviously he's extremely well known in, in the universe. Um, and so I, I bet it is very easy to be swept away by his in gigantic wave, right? By his personality, by the media, by what society thinks that you should be, you know, uh, maybe society puts pressure on you that you should, you know, just be the stay at home wife and support him. And that's it. I'm not quite sure, but I at least know that being in the Greek, uh, being Greek Orthodox, I had that pressure of, no, 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 I'm supposed to stay at home and support my husband. That is my role. So how, take me through what you do in order to show up as yourself, as this independent, badass woman that you are, putting together these community and just doing incredible things to the world. Like, how are you staying strong like that and not getting swept away by the world around you, including your husband? Well, let's be honest that anybody, right, independently from how big their life is, okay, how big the world around is for them. Anybody that deals with multi-layers of things, um, it is really easy to get swept away from one side or to another side or just focus on one thing or another thing. So I wanted to level that because I think it's very a lot of times when you're talking to people that you know are in the entertainment industry or people that have money or people that are really successful in business, people go, well, that's easy because of that, right? And, and, and it's just, it, it's a human being kind of situation where no matter what level you are, if you have multi-layers, it's really easy to get swept into certain directions. So I think that for me personally, and I'm no expert on the topic, okay? You're doing um, a good but, job though, gal. So I want to take every tip that you got. <laughs> I'm not an expert on it, but I must say that I think it's important for us to understand that we have seasons. So we have seasons in our life. And this is something that, you know, if you really pay attention to Mother Nature, it's what we do right mother nature goes into seasons we go into seasons too, to understand that it's going to be times in your life where it is all about your partner and it is all about supporting and you know that it is more about this or that or family i mean look at the season that we're leaving now you know what i mean like talk come on right so i think that it's important for me personally one thing that has helped me and i struggle with this like uh I'll, a lot of t different times where I go, okay, do I work? Do I stop working? And I've talked to a lot of older women that are friends of mine. That That's one tip. Get some older friends, okay? Some older, wise, very strong women that have, like, that have done it successfully. And it doesn't mean that you're going to do just like them. It just means that you're going to listen you're going to understand, you're going to get tips, and then you make your own way. Do never follow what other people are doing. But, um, you know, and, and, and I had talked to some of them and some of them go, don't work at all. You know, some of them are like, no, I decided not to work and wait, wait until a, later in life to start a business, to start something. And then I've talked to others that go, no way. Are you crazy? If I stop everything, then when my kids are out of the house, 
then who I, who am I? Then what am I do? What do I do? Right. So I think that for me, that's been the path that I have decided to dance with because it really is a dance. Right. Because I'll, you know, I'll be honest with you. Like if I would be saying yes to everything that comes to me, I wouldn't, my family would be miserable. Like it's just my kids would be miserable because I'm in a fortunate position to say that because my husband works enough and hard enough where he's paying the bills. Right. So I don't have to go out there every day to pay to worry about that sense. So I understand that. But I do feel like even when I was broke, okay, before I have a family, before I start modeling, okay, when I was young and broke, I always went to the value of what's important for me, what's my priority, and what's the right thing to do. And if you follow that, things, this is just my life experience, things somehow kind of fall falls into place. And if you work hard, you don't have to work hard, harder if you do this way. But things kind of work and people come in your life that are to help you and kind of get into the right direction. So I think that having priorities in your life, a list. So I have a list of priorities for myself. Whatever comes to my life, it's going to take me away from those priorities. I go, no, thank you very much. No, I know it sounds great. I know that. No, because I know that at the end of the long term effect of this as a as a person that has a family that has kids, if I didn't have kids, maybe that's the answer would be very different. Right. That that answer would be very different if I didn't have kids, actually. But for me, having kids, I have to put, you know, my family, my kids and that priority, because if I don't, then later on in life, the results of that would be way worse. Right. Um, so I think it's understanding that seasons and understanding when to pick your season and, and picking your path for that time. And that path may change. So I'm like, okay, do I continue doing this this way? Do I change it to that way? What do I do? I have days that I go, I have to stop everything. This is crazy. I can't handle it. And then I go, no, you cannot stop. You know, you know people are getting good stuff out of what you're doing. Going. Okay, so I want to, I, I so want to stop you right there because take me through exactly what that is because that's what people struggle with, I think, where it's like, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. I'm exhausted. So take me through those, that actual moment that those voices are coming to you and you say, whoa, 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 whoa. how do you break it? Like, how do you go, hang on, this, this thought isn't serving me. I need to stop listening to this so that I can keep going down my path of my passion. I think that's when you need to pause, whatever that pause means for you. For some people it will be a day, some people will be a few hours, some people will be more than a day. You have to always remember, if you lose yourself on the journey, you lose everything. You lose everything. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much success you get. I don't care how much likes, how much millions of views you get. If you lose yourself, if you lose yourself, you are... I was going to cuss here, but I'm not going to do oh, that. Oh, go for it. My, my, I cuss all the time. <laughs> you fucked. I'm sorry. If you lose yourself, <laughs> that's it. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you need to understand that, you know, you need to be able to see yourself late in life, which is something that I've been able to do since I'm very young. So since I'm a very early age, I knew, okay, I wanted to have, a, you know, I wanted to have kids early. I wanted to have a business. I wanted to do this. Like, you need to see yourself. And I think that in different stages of your life, you need to pause. And go, okay, well, I've learned all these things because your lessons are going to also guide you and dictate what's the next things you're going to do, right? So I'm 38 now. I know much more now than when I was 28 years old. And I have a lot more other responsibilities. So I need to pause and understand what are my responsibilities? What are my journey? What have I learned? How do I guide this with all the learnings that life gave it to me? And how do I make that best? So when you start getting all those voices and all this craziness, which I'm going through it right now, is not a fun place to be. You need to have time with yourself because you started this journey just with yourself. And things came in your life because who you are and how you chose your journey. So only you, only yourself, you can talk to your partner, you can talk to friends, but honestly, only you really know what you think you're capable of doing and what you're not. It's very important to this, see that difference. I'm really capable of doing this. I'm not capable of doing that. That's something I learned at, at my age now, because before I was like, I can do all of it. <laughs> and then I was like, 
no, I, no, I, I, like I can't, but I just jeopardize so much on doing that, that what's the point? Like, what what point am I trying to prove that I can do it all? I can ask for help. It's okay, right? So I think that just pausing and being with yourself and whatever that is for you, I don't have a magic bullet answer for you because we're all different. We're all different individuals. So whatever that is for you. So for me, for instance, I have to like, I have to go away like for a few days just with myself and I have to go away in a way that challenges me. Maybe it's camping, maybe it's doing, you know, it, I have to be around mother nature. And I went to areas where like, I got scared. I got, you know, I got like, I got challenged and it, you know, and it took me into like day two, taking this long drive, a six hour drive to the another destination, listen to this one song to kind of break down in tears and like go like, ah, oh, and have that release of like thinking straight. Okay. I'm not worried about this. I'm not worrying about that. I'm not worried about this. What is Camilla as an individual thinks she can do, cannot do? What is the next journey and what's the next stop for it? Into, you know, and I think that a lot of people, I think, and this is, I don't know about men, but I think with women and again, having older friends, which I love talking to them so much about this kind of things. I think we go through different stages and different stages that come in. We have to stop, reassess and how do we, how do we proceed? <laughs> That, that was so strong because I think that that's so important in making sure that you're always reassessing. What is the dream that you want now? And like for me, I so pride myself on the growth. I don't want to be the same person today that I am going to be in a year or two years or three years. So having that reassessment, like my goal right now may not be the same goal in a year or two. You just said, you just said it all. And by the way, don't feel guilty about that. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, like, it's okay. It's okay that, you know, look, I'm not saying start one thing, don't finish, start another. Like, no, you gotta, you gotta stick to one thing long enough because you, you gotta finish your stuff and you gotta see it through. Right. But in your journey, you're going to evolve and, and even you're going to evolve with what you're doing. The evolution could be, well, I started this for this reason, but on this journey, I've learned all these things that now I know I can do even more with it, with the same thing, right? And like it, it can have the next evolution of the same thing that you've been working on. Um, and that goes for, you know, for stay at home moms too. We're not just talking about business. We need to talk about the evolution, how you run your household, how you handle your kids, how you handle yourself, what you put into your house, what things you bring it in. So it's a whole evolution that was it's a constantly thing happening. And I think we need to give credit for that. And I think we need to give credit that it's also okay to change. Yes. Oh my God, girl. I love that so much. Um, there's one thing that you said that I actually want to go a little deep on where you said, you know, I'll, I'll give myself space, like whether you go on drives and things like that, um, to really ask yourself, you know, who is Camilla? How do you actually answer that? Like, what is the connections that you make with asking the question and then coming up with the answer, is it searching your heart? Is it, yeah, like wh- how do you actually come up with an answer when you ask yourself that? Okay, can I, can I, I, I'm not a big like ask a question and get the answer person. I'm not big on uh, therapy. Like I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not against it. I think that a lot of times that's a shortcut. Okay. So, I'm all for it. If you if you feel like you need a therapy and you need to talk to somebody, I'm all for it. But what I encourage people is to try to do your work first and then get there or or do your work at the same time as you're doing your therapy. Because a lot of people that I see and I hear, you know, girlfriends talk to me sometimes about this, about like they just rely on the therapist to tell them the answer. They just rely, mm. they just rely on the therapist to make them ask these questions. And I'm more, I, I'm for, you know, you already know, like if you really stop, if you take that pause, even it could be a short pause, you know what those questions are. You might not know the answer to it, but you have those questions. You more than anybody know how to get to those answers. You might need help getting to them, but you know what you need in a way, right? Or even if you don't know, your instinct will kind of guide you and you get to something where you go, 
oh man, I didn't know I need that that bad, but wow, I, I didn't realize. But it will help you guide you to that realization. So I'm when I'm going through it, I'm not necessarily trying to be like, what's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? What I'm trying to do is just number one, disconnect from all the things that don't allow me to be in in you know harmony with myself. Um, you know, the world takes out takes a lot. So everybody wants something. Not everybody, but majority of interactions you have is people taking from you, right? Then I try to put myself into situations that would spark again that person that mm. I am. And like, like, like what? Like again, Mother Nature for me does, you know, going on hikes, listening to music, um, you know, having quiet time, trying to read a book, trying to talk to people I love during that process, driving, like driving, you know, and just stopping at random places and things, discovering, like discovery. I'm a big discovery mm. person. That's for me. Like I need to get to a place and go discover and go explore and get to, you know. So again, but Mother Nature sitting at night and looking at the stars, going to a place where I can see all the stars, going to, you know, a place where I can hear the animals. And I come out of it and go, oh, you're, you're a really cool chick, Camilla. Like you. <laughs> like, I forgot about it. Like you're actually fun. Like I forgot how fun you were. Like, you know, then all of a sudden I'm singing to myself again. I'm laughing more. I'm, you know, I'm like be more fun, you know what I mean? And more, be more adventures and all instead of like to, 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 you know? So I think that getting, putting yourself, I don't know, for me personally, what it works more is just putting myself in those situations, knowing that I have to get there. And just when I get there, just allowing myself to just be, and then everything kind of starts to come with clarity, you know, like when I'm driving, like I literally record, you know, uh, my husband does this. I never used to do that. He actually, you know, I, I learned from him and I like start to just record my thoughts or ideas. And and again, I want to make it very clear. I'm not saying you should not do therapy. I think it's got to be a combined thing. Otherwise, you just become codependent on something that, you know, is meant to be as a help guide, not a codependency situation does that make sense yeah absolutely and the way you broke that down and why makes complete sense like as you're saying you know I go out I switch things off I go to nature it really does do something I think to grounding us with um I always think like when I'm at work and things get really hectic and stress starts to happen I feel like it's like like this exterior um the, like a buzzing noise on the outside that I can't switch off but but once I go somewhere, switch things off, that starts to clear. And now I can actually hear my own thoughts. And I think that that's a big thing where like you almost can't hear your own thoughts unless they're negative. Now, when the thoughts are negative, they seem to shout at me left, right and center. Um. <laughs> it's horrible. I, I Honestly, like the negative thoughts are horrible. Um but I do, I do for myself, I know that I hear more negative thoughts when I'm not in a good place with myself. And when I am in a good place with myself, the negative thoughts still come, but I'm able to go, oh, get out, get out, get out of here. Nope, you don't belong here, you know? Um, it's hard to, to have those moments where your thoughts are actually catching up with yourself, where you're actually listening to yourself, you're actually getting inspiration and all of that. So you have to make a conscious decision. Like it has to be, it's like, it's almost like you have to schedule, you know, those times for yourself and those things, which I'm very guilty to schedule times for everybody in my family, except for myself. <laughs> and when I do take time for myself, I feel guilty. And I try to like cut it short, you know, but like, Oh, I'm going to be gone for like, Oh, seven days. And then day three, I'm like, okay, I think I need to go back. You know what I mean? Like I start feeling guilty about it, which by the way, that doesn't happen often at all. I can't remember last time besides this time that just happened now. I mean, it's been years really mm -hmm. that I've taken a break for myself. Um, but even the mini breaks, I always talk about the importance of those mini breaks. And that mini break might be you guys figure out dinner, figure out things. I'm going to sit outside, you know, go to a park, go sit outside and just lay down, you know, uh, go sit in the yard, go whatever it is. Again, whatever it is that makes you, you know, like happy 
on your own by yourself, just go do it for even if it's an hour, even if, but every so often, because we're very guilty of not giving ourselves that time as women. And then I feel like it's very easy for us to lose ourselves into what everybody else needs, into whatever the world, the business, the this, the house, the kids, whatever it is that, you know, and then we see, and then this is what happens. And tell me if you have experienced this. Um, so then you start looking at the younger, like girls or the younger generation, and you start seeing, you know, them with all this joy and you start kind of dissing a little bit. And that's when, you know, if you're doing that, you know, oh shit, I am in trouble. Because you should look at that and feel that and be like, man, that is cool. Like I used to, you know, whatever version of that I did, where is that? You know, and kind of like reconnect with that, you know? That's so true. I mean, even thinking about the stories of your life, right? Where you move to LA and then you go to New York by yourself and you take on multiple jobs and, you know, like all these kind of things that we just try and chances and putting ourselves out there. I mean, obviously you moving from Brazil to Los Angeles at like 15 or 16 is just insane. But like me, I want to live in America. I got married to an American. I was bold. I moved. And yet over time, I do think we get more um, fearful of losing the things we we do have, which I think is actually a incredible learning lesson and yet an utter detriment to us as humans. And the reason why I say that is because you stop taking chances. You stop putting yourself out there. You stop experimenting. You stop um, seeing what life has to offer. And to me, that's where purpose and fulfillment comes from. Purpose and fulfillment comes from experimenting, seeing the things, trusting your emotions. And in fact, coming full circle, there's something to instinct there's something to a gut there's something to like if you tell yourself okay maybe that's a bad idea and you keep waking up with the same idea and you're still on fire for it like sometimes even if all the lessons you've learned on paper says you shouldn't try it go with your gut yes i'm all for going with your gut but again we have to be responsible yes 100 percent. Right. right so for you ladies listening to this, don't think we're saying, at least that's not what I'm saying, but don't <laughs> listen to this and go, oh, you know, go with the gut and that's it. No, you have to be responsible going with your intuition. You have to be responsible going with your gut because as women, we have very, very strong intuition. And a lot of us, a lot of us do not get in touch with that intuition as much as mm-hmm. we can. How many businesses, how many people uh, I did not go into, you know, did not went in the journey with and laid on like, because I knew in my gut, I'm like, this is not good. I can also tell you that I've did things against my gut knowing, oh man, this is, mm, but you know, but let's go. And later on, I pay the price for mm-hmm. it. Um, so I think that being your intuition is so important. It's so important. And you have, you have to listen to it, but you have to use it with responsibility. That's yeah, point. correct. You don't want to blindly go with your gut that um, can lead you astray, I think. Um, but yeah. just, I don't, I don't know about you, but growing up um, Greek Orthodox female, it was like, oh, don't, this is what you're going to do. This is where you're going to be. This is, you know, how you're going to live. And whatever your gut says, it, it was almost like, no, no, don't listen to it. This is, you know, and I think that that's why I personally so resonate with listening to your intuition and your gut, but I completely agree. You can't blindly listen, but don't freaking ignore it. I was taught to just ignore it. Yeah. No, for me, for me, I wasn't taught that like, look, I, I, I kind of broke the mode of like, you know, what's normal to do for my family because, you know, I left, I left Brazil when I was you know, 15 years old, 15, 16, I, I'm horrible with dates, but let's say 15. Then, you know, I came, I moved here. I didn't speak a word of English. I mean, I was, you know, we grew up in Brazil. We had everything we needed. And then all of a sudden I'm traveling the world. Like I lived in so many different countries. Like I lived in, you know, I lived in Israel. I lived in Greece. I lived in Italy in France. Like I lived in all these places and, and I've traveled so much around the world by myself like with very little money. That's when like sometimes people tell me, you know, well, you need this. And I'm like, mm. you do need a certain level, but you don't need all that you really think you need. Like, cause I've done it with very, very, very little. I'm telling you like 
super little. And my dad used to call me from Brazil going like, what are you doing? Like, I'm really worried about you. Are you making money? And I, I remember like it was yesterday. I told my dad, I said, dad, I'm not making money just yet. But the life experiences that I'm learning and my, and my, the stamps in my passport, I was like, nobody can take that away from me, dad. But I, I was always very like, go and, and just go and, and, and we'll figure out. Or like I had times where I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from or the rent for the next month, you know, kind of thing. So it wasn't all easy, mm-hmm. but I do believe hard work and do things for the right reasons and do it right. Do it for the right reasons. Be a good human. And, and the, the universe and the people around you, they will see that and, and, and it kind of shelters and you will find your path and you'll find your journey on that. Oh, girl. Well, seriously, you're bringing all of that to the table with your community and women of today is incredible. You're really helping, I think, build courage, confidence, power and strength in women around the world. So um, where can people find you? Where can people find women of today? Um, go check all of the good stuff that you're working on. Yes. So listen, you just go on the of today website, womenoftoday.com. Go on the Women of Today Instagram. Check out my own personal Instagram, uh, Camilla McConaughey. And really, we are all about learning from each other and doing better for yourselves and for the community around you. So that's what we're trying to do in a nutshell amazing guys 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 honestly go check out her website check out all the content that she's behind it's freaking impactful and honestly follow her because you will not be disappointed you'll be able to get strength courage power confidence and more so guys please do drop in the comments below what was the powerful thing that camilla said today that really freaking struck you if you're not subscribed please click that subscribe button down there and guys if you're not following me follow me at lisa billu and until next time guys as always be the hero of your own life peace out what up guys thanks so much for watching this video if you'd like another dose of badassery make sure you watch this video right here because i know you like it but hey also while you're here guys you might as well click that subscribe button down there so you don't miss any future episodes and of course until next time be the hero of your own life peace out